Well, folks, I show 7.15 p.m. on October 7, 2013. First off tonight, we have marked on our agenda for a public hearing on the 2014 Community Development Block Grant. Um, what it is, I'll have Jay and all of us chip in, but each year the federal government moves some money down to the state, to the county, and then to the municipalities. So it's uh, grant money, essentially. We've had a good track record and good success in obtaining block grants over the years. We have some good grant writers within our staff and people that know how to word it up right. Um, I hear whispering over there, those are the folks that do a lot of grant writing. Uh, what we do is we take public input, but we also think at the board level what's the next great project. They're geared for infrastructure improvements, essentially, and um, historically we've used them to build sidewalks is one of our main thrusts. And this year we're looking at a few other options. We've talked about it at some workshops and some other meetings, but for technical reasons, the county, which manages the Black Grant program, does require that we have a public hearing on it and we take input from the audience and the public. But we have our decision up here is what we have to work with tonight, it looks like. Um, just to give you a brief overview, we've been working on it from the context of finishing what would be the firehouse lane sidewalk project um, then we would add an insert of sidewalk spur at the south end of the village on route 9 on the west side of the village there there's a missing link that's never been closed we're going to close that that'll connect the village sidewalk to the one that runs along the town on the west side of route 9 and then we're looking at in our well field project we know there's two abandoned wells over there wells two and eight are the numbers um, we're looking to recondition or close them out, meaning um, the county, the DOH records we refer to a lot in a lot of our other meetings, the DOH recommendations. Um, there's two old abandoned wells there. They have to either be properly closed and sealed or maybe reused. So we thought, well, instead of pouring concrete down, let's see what's the problem with them. And the one thing we found is anecdotally, they were taken out of use for high salinity issues which we think we're tracing back to 30 years plus or minus ago um, in the old days not that old days but 30 years is a long time they had um, apparently a, st a salt storage shed there which is no longer there and the good news was for the board to know um, our engineers pulled some samples last week and the salinity levels are well within um, the parameters that are required I think the, the limit is 250 uh, micrograms per is a deciliter, and is it a per liter? Um, and then on top of that, um, the, the thresholds are like the threshold is 250, and we're testing like 12 or 13 yeah, per. And 13 it's a, for well two and 10, 10 for well number eight. So, yeah, so they're well under, which is great news in our mind because if we couldn't use those wells, we'd have to think of a plan B for the second phase of the block grant. But that, I mean. Those sidewalk sections I mentioned would be not the full $150,000. The grant eligibility amount is $150,000, and those two pieces would run us, we're projecting about $50,000. So we have money left, and rather than leave it on a table, um, in our quest for a well-functioning, well-field, we think we'd like to put the money into those two wells. What that would be is doing further testing, but we were ruling out the salinity, we'd do some further testing, and then look at what it takes to get them back but Jay you want to jump in and give some specifics on what you've been doing um, well basically um, I assembled our portion of the uh, block grant application 2014 municipal application for the uh, the water and the sidewalks in the, in the village and um, I have assembled a few figures here. Maps are in, are required to be included. Um, I had simple two figures that will uh, uh, basically detail the locations of the sidewalks. And uh, Robert was kind enough to uh, put together a, uh, a map for me to uh, to show the locations of well number two and well number eight. They'll be indicated as figures one, two, and three. And uh, Brent, a sort of a collaborative effort, Brent assembled. Uh, text for this thing, the uh, required text that's uh, submitted, and I'll take that text home. It was submitted to me in a, in a Word document, and I'll kind of push it around a little bit and add the appropriate, you know, uh, designations for it. And, uh, and so that's 
so that it all fits within the grant application in the appropriate place. And what we have to do tonight is take public comment, and then uh, we will, uh, and if we, you know, if we decide that it's time, we will uh, pass a resolution that says we support the submission of the application, and uh, we'll take the minutes of any any comments during the public hearing, they have to be included in the submission as well as a copy of the advertisement that was in the paper and all that goes together down to the county when we're ready to go. That's pretty much, the county takes care of the environmental portion. Uh, they do that. Uh, I think the only thing that, that uh, I think that we have yet to do is to give probably Ann Saylor or either uh, Audrey Murray call to just make sure that that we all fall within the low mod. You know, there's if you look at the map that's included with the application this year, um, there's a dividing line on Route Nine. One side is and one side isn't. So I think uh, I, I don't think we have any issues, and it's basically north of uh, Market Street that one side. Uh, is not low mod west. Okay, west east east yeah. is so mm -hmm. basically that's where we are. You okay. know, I think I think we're going to be fine because most of our work uh, when when we were thinking of including the pavers in there, uh, it may have come into play. But I think now that we're just at, along uh, Firehouse Lane and and the southern part of the village along Route Nine, I don't think we have any issues at all in that respect. I think we'll be fine. What Jay's talking about there is the county looks at <clears throat> the demographics of the area that you're trying to help, and low mod is better in that they're more willing to loan money in that, or not loan money, give grant money in that scenario. And Wells 2 and 8, just for everybody to know, they are in our current well field. It's not like we're going off site or anything. They sit behind out of the garage back in the land we own in that section. So. Um, and we thought this would be a good project too because of the well-filled improvement. We, we saw some extra yield from the improved wells there. We have the last year's community about a block grant wells five and six on the east side of the village, which gives us additional capacity. And you know, with these two new wells coming up, possibly online, we should be pretty close to handling what our goal is to. Um, provide full build-out supply for the T&Ds in the south, the north, general business district, and so um, So it works well with all the other water projects we have going on. This will be our third water project, uh, different different types of funding mechanisms. So it should be good. So just to recap, if some people came in late, we're talking about the next version of the Community Development Block Grant, the 2014 edition. and. Um, we're looking at sidewalk continuation on Firehouse Lane. It's partially done now. And one thing for everybody to think about, we're talking about we would like to put it at curb height. It starts at curb, meaning instead of grade level, we'd have curb elevation. But then some variation of that around the firehouse itself. Jay, maybe you could fill us in on that. Um, but anyway, for the back, people that just came in the back there, um, so it's sidewalk continuation on Firehouse, continuation on Route 9, where's the gap between the village sidewalks and the town. And then uh, working on wells two and eight in the well field. So, for all of us, uh, what we found in the Park Avenue sidewalk, the original engineering showed a sidewalk at grade level. But remember last year we all decided that that really didn't work there. We put it at curb height. And essentially, we'd like to do the same thing over on the firehouse lane side with some modification around some of the Big open, you know, there would be no sidewalk where the firehouse has a big apron and the village has a big apron and things. It's, um, but we work with that so it'd be the engineering exists already, but we just have to get it that one part drawn to, to get the curb in there. Any comment from the public on Block Grant 2014? Yeah, I did. Anything from the board? You have any questions? Timeline-wise, we look pretty good. There's uh, what Jay and Brent and myself have been doing. We've been piecing together our parts of the application, um, data, 
wording. The interesting part is um, we would have to tease Brent here a little bit. Um, some of the application sections only allow 750 characters. It's not even words, it's characters. So um, you'll see why I'm saying that later. But um, it's he had to edit down. It's actually a item in space count. It's not just word count. So uh, the county doesn't want to read a lot of words, but we gave them the content and the different Give them a few words, you give them a map, you give them a little budget, you give them a time frame. Mm. And then they come out and look at everything. Right. And we had good luck with last year's projects. We uh, did Park Avenue, we did paver work through the village, and then we caught on. We actually, this year, we had uh, one of our own staff members doing a lot of paver work, um, which really made some really nice improvements, I think, out in the main central business area. But we don't need to use block grant for that this year. Well, the 13 line, the one we're working on right now is for the, the two additional miles out east. Okay. So, that was 2012. I misspoke. Yeah, it's 2012. Yeah. They're always essentially a year behind. So we finished 12, and 13 is another well-related project. But then um, 14 is one we're talking about now. But anyway, what we'd have to do is, if there's no comment, we'll shortly close the public hearing. We'll start a meeting, a regular meeting in a few minutes. In our regular meeting, we have a resolution that the county will require we read and, and vote on. But any other thoughts or comments from anybody? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's closed. We'll just take a, looks like a three minute break. <laughs> okay, I have 7.30, so let's all rise and pledge the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, welcome. 7.30, October 7th, 2013, Village Board, Village of Red Hook. We just had a public hearing on the block grants. So some of you will wonder why we do this twice, but officially we have to do it that way. Um, what I thought we'd do, we have some guests in the audience. I thought we might just bust out of some of our normal cycle just to get some of them in and out up there uh, since they're here to help us. But first, I did just want to go over um, one protocol as far as after calling the minutes, uh, reviewing the minutes rather, I'd like to just have everybody uh, give me their approval. Are there any additions, alterations, or corrections? For the minutes, we have uh, our regular September 9th meeting, a public hearing, and the village board meeting that, that night. And then uh, September 19th, we had a workshop meeting. So, I've gone through them and made some edits and corrections, but anybody else see anything? Hearing none, is there a motion to accept the minutes for the 9th in the public hearing and the uh, 19th workshop? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Let's see, as I said, we have a few guests, so we'll jump to some of the business items down, halfway down your agendas. Uh, we have Judge Trebosser in the audience. He's been working all afternoon and uh, waiting to talk with us tonight. So uh, he wants to talk about a, a court grant he's applied for. So Judge, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to uh, come here to uh, talk about the annual court grant. As the board will know, uh, since uh, Judge Martin and I first came to office in uh, 2007, we've obtained over $70,000 worth of grants to uh, furnish and uh, supply equipment for the courts both here and in town. And again, we come before you seeking authorization for another grant uh, in the amount of $17,200. This would be um, to cover the purchase of two new folding tables to put out when we have trials. The ones we have are quite old and quite beat up. Uh, also, um, new locks for the clerk's office uh, to make them more secure since we have public funds there. A uh, uh, amount of money to the repair or replace the courtroom clock, which is uh, uh, in the uh, clock repair somewhere. So we, we've asked for that. And as you know, we've had a change in staff. We have a new assistant court clerk, uh, Danielle Tashman, uh, who's working out very well. And we have to reprint the letterhead and business cards 
So we're putting that on the grant as well. So the bulk of the grant is for a major security uh, initiative. And uh, being that it does involve uh, court security and the safety of the public and court personnel, it would probably be advisable that if you did have questions about the major security initiative, which I think the board is aware of, that we would do that in executive session. Otherwise, I'm happy to answer questions about the other items or about the grant process. And we need a resolution, and the resolution is before the board. Okay. So you mentioned it's 17000 and what? $17,200, Mr. Mayor. Okay. And you've got the paperwork all done in your office and yourself? Have done all I actually have the paperwork here. And you, you so it, once, once the uh, board passes the resolution, if they do, I would need you to sign it. And then okay. I can put it in this very envelope and mail it off to Albany tonight. <laughs> Clerk, do you have the resolution he's talking about there? Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? I mean, we, we do this every year, and he has a pretty good success rate. Yeah, in you don't have to sign that. Okay. Um, and of that, what would you say? A lot of competition. Well, you know, as the various courts, especially ours, have been more successful at getting these grants every year, the other courts have woken up, and they're, they're starting to apply also. But uh, we've had a good, pretty good track record, so I think we're, we're, we should have a good chance of getting most, if not all, of what we asked for. I'll let you know as soon as I find out. When will they uh, make a determination? Uh, normally, it's after the first year. And what's typically the maximum amount of grant? Well, under the law, the maximum grant is $30,000. The very first grant we got was $29,000, almost $30,000, to pay for most of what you see in the courtroom here today. Uh, the construction of the bench, uh, paying for the sound system, uh, the security cameras, things of that nature. Is there, uh, is there a is there local matching obligation to this grant? No. So this is 100%? Right. Okay. Free yeah. money. It's OPM financing, other people's money. Mm -hmm. I was distracted with the question. So it's New York State money, Office of Court Administration? The Office of Court Administration mm -hmm. um, has been uh, very supportive of local courts. And they are trying to um, set uniform standards for what courts should be like. Some courts, not here in, of course, the village or town of Reddick, but there are courts around the state where the judge was meeting in the highway garage on a, uh, on a car table. So they want to make sure every court has the kind of bench and other accoutrements that we uh, enjoy here in Reddick. Okay, thank you. Court, do you want to read that resolution for us? Would you be so kind? Authorizing the Village of Red Hook to pursue a grant application to obtain funding for the Village of Red Hook Justice Court, whereas the Village of Red Hook is authorized to adopt resolutions to, to address facilities which are owned, operated, and maintained by the Village of Red Hook, and more particularly the Village of Red Hook Justice Court. And whereas the Village of Red Hook has been advised by the Village Justice Honorable Jonah Trubosser that certain monies might be available to the village in order to assist the village in certain costs associated with the Village of Red Hook Justice Court operations. Whereas the Village of Red Hook Village Board has determined that the Village of Red Hook Justice Court is in need of certain equipment and other necessities, which will ensure that the Village of Red Hook provides appropriate <coughs> mechanisms and auxiliary apparatus to the Village Justice Acting Village Justice and the Court Clerks as well as all personnel and individuals who have businesses before the Village of Red Hook Justice Court. Whereas the Village Board has been advised that there might be available, might be available, certain grant monies from New York State Justice Court assistance grant, which might be, which might enable the Village to obtain certain revenues to help fund the purchase of certain mechanisms and auxiliary apparatus and for the Village of Red Hook Justice Court. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of the Village of Trustees, County of Dutchess, State of New York, as follows. The Village Board authorizes Honorable Jonah Trinwasi, Village Justice, to pursue any and all grant applications from the Justice Court Assistant Pro Program Grant and any other agencies, state organizations, private organizations, which might be available for fiscal year 2013. The Village Board specifically authorizes the Honorable Jonah Tree Bosser, Village Justice, to pursue any and all grant applications, and more particularly the 2013 Justice Court Assistant Grant requesting funds not to exceed $30,000 to help defray Justice Court, court, court costs 
including the expenditures of grant funds necessary for court operations. The village board authorizes Honorable Jonah Tree Wasser, village justice, to take whatever steps which are necessary in order to pursue and hopefully secure the grant's money not to exceed $30,000 which might be available through the 2013 Justice Court Assistant Program grant and many and any other grant monies derived therefrom. Clerk has read the resolution. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion? So it sounds like the paperwork's done. We've had input on the selecting of the project designation as, where, as to where the money would go. Um, I would say it's a worthy cause and we appreciate the judge's effort. And what I would do is call it for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I want to thank the board. I also want to thank, if I may, Sergeant Hildebrand, who's in the audience here today. Uh, his uh, advice was invaluable on the security aspects of the grant. And I want to thank uh, our clerk, Cindy Cole, our clerk treasurer, for supplying some of the financial information, and uh, my court staff, uh, court clerk, uh, Kathy Fell and Deputy Court Clerk Daniel Tashman uh, for their assistance. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope we get it. Good luck. Thank you. And I'm happy to answer any questions the public may have. You want to hold it? I'll give you a Oh. Notarize it right here. All right. You owe a quarter there, Mr. Mayor. A quarter? Really? For a notarizer. <laughs> We're very efficient. We're notarizing. It's been signed. It's going in the mail. He said tonight. I know. Maybe can, you should drive it. Can I get a copy of the signature, please? Yes. Yes. I'll give you a copy. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, Take care. Let's see. While we're uh, working with folks in the audience that need to move on, we have uh, Robert Flores from CT Mail, the engineer that helped with Phase One of the USDA RD Water Project. Right now, I thought we'd talk more about Item Number Two in the agenda for regular business. The 2013 block grant update. Um, this, like we said before, we're, we just finished 12, which was the sidewalk project. 13 is the well reconditioning over at uh, the old brush pile area. And um, we've selected the engineering firm and they're starting to work on some of the details, the aspects to get the next thing going there. Um, these things always lag. They're in, even though now we're in year 13. We will be doing a lot of work next spring. They, they carry through throughout the year a little bit. So, do um, you have any thoughts for us there, Robert? Just, uh, I guess, the quick update is uh, procedure. Is, again, it's well uh, five and six, which is the one on the, on the east side on 199. And uh, those were, again, functioning wells that were taken out of service a long time ago. Um, the wells, pumps themselves, and, and, and the internals have all been you know, long gone. So they have to be recreated, and uh, we have to start with sampling, which we've started on that process, collecting samples from the wells, see exactly what's, what's in them, so that we can uh, write the specifications for the water treatment plant that we that got the grant for. And the plan will be to put, that, uh, put the specifications together, put it out to bid over the winter, so that come, come spring, we'll be ready to uh, start you know, on-site work. So I think we're in tune with that. And I think the way the, way the program works, you have to complete the project uh, next year. Mm -hmm. So the, thir the 13. Right. You right. Yeah, that same dollar amount. We got the full $150,000 from the Black Rat organization last for this project. So that's the, the what we're working with. So, um, and then we don't really have to vote or anything here. I just want to while he's in town, give us an update on that. Um, so, Robert, after, after we get bids and we get the, the, we award the bid and then we get the notice to proceed, how long do you anticipate that the actual period of construction, installation, that sort of thing to last? That's, that's probably going to be between um, four or six months, I would say. And a lot of it's not going to be working out there six months straight. It's just that uh, some of these things are long lead items. So you, uh, particularly the package plant that we're talking about. Okay. Right, so um, uh, it could take, you know, 14, 16 weeks by the time you order it for it to show up. Okay. So you show up, prep it, you know, it shows up, you have to, you know, hard pipe it, hard pipe to bring up the electric and the piping and all that kind of stuff. Is it possible to do the engineering, spec it out, go send the package out for bid? 
uh, prior to the spring. And so when spring does come, you know, the treatment plan had already been ordered, you know, within a month or a month and a half of delivery time. Yeah, that, that, that would, that's, that would be, that's the plan. So that uh, during the dead period of winter, for say, we, we take care of that order in so that we can hit the ground running. So we should, we should have the contractor selected by that point and um, contract signed. Yeah. Since um, we, we discussed this a little bit, but uh, the, the major component of this is the package uh, uh, treatment plant, right? And uh, uh, that's, that's what drives the schedule. What sort of maintenance is required on this package plan? I mean, is, is there a, a, a maintenance schedule required for it? It will be. It'll be, um, uh, it's modular, and it's got, it'll have its own operation maintenance manual with preventive maintenance schedule. Uh, that just like everything that's mechanical, you know, you need to uh, keep on top of it so it doesn't, uh, you know, so it lasts its full life. And that was part of the RFP that was Submitted was the preparation of an O&M manual, um, just to make sure those are properly maintained, and also locations for what we do with the waste and that kind of stuff as well from the treatment plant. So that's part of the plan, I guess, part of the engineering work. Yeah, so that's where we are now. We're um, just starting the initial steps. First is, you know, before you spec the treatment plant, you gotta know what you're treating. So that's what we've collected water samples. Uh, waiting for results on those. Okay, today we distributed the email version of those results to everybody. It's not the actual lab report, but it was from those the are, engineer's those office. Are two and eight. Two and eight, yeah. Five I'm, and six. Yeah. Okay, I misread the samples you're talking about. Okay, so you're talking about five and six. Five and six. Yeah, okay. but, yeah. well, well, five uh, has a pump in it that was used for a garden hose. Mm -hmm. So that was, was very handy in terms of collecting samples. So that's, that's why we were able to get that, get, get that going right away. Okay. While we have Robert here, any other questions for him? But it's, um, he has to travel, so he's not going to stick around the whole meeting. But there are, uh, yeah, on our bigger project, we're, you know, again, like we said, near the end there, which is we need some final paperwork, close up documents. Uh, we need to coordinate that with our friends who are on furlough right now. So. <laughs> When they, when they get back, we'll uh, get that straightened out. Yeah, I don't know if you all caught that, but we're working the USDA grant, and a lot of people interact with their federal employees, and right now they're not at work. So fortunately our project's done, and we don't have any pressing major issue. We're be between phases. Essentially one is done and two is not fully developed at our end. Um, so it's, it's a good time as any to have nobody pick up a phone, but it's not great. So. Uh, We've got, we're processing different things internally and waiting for them to come back. So, if, if it does last a little longer, it could impact some final payments for the contractors. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, right now it's not, a, not an issue. So we're anticipating actually close out uh, at least two of the three contracts before the end of the month, if all goes well with USDA and the federal government. Well, can close out a car because we have a meeting set for next week with them, right? Is it next week? Um, yeah, but I guess we're not, we're not seeing that happening. So. Right, so. All right. Thank you, Robert. Okay. And there is one question I got. I asked you once before for an MSDS sheet on that material that you used for fracking the wells, the acid. Yep. This is not an MSDS sheet, this is a product line sheet. Where is the MSDS sheet? And even in here, it's not even marked to which product you use. Well, I'll get together. That's, that's the, the products we, we used, which is what I left with Cindy. That's what you're talking about? No, I'm looking for the MSDS sheet, the safety data sheet on this stuff. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get you more specifics. So. Yeah, because you're supposed to leave it with, because we had a file of foil on this and everything else. So okay. What did, is, is the, is the just, just a minute, excuse me, is the foil available? Do you have it as well? Did they ask what for What did he ask for? Is he, did he ask for MSDS? I don't know that that's what he asked for. But, um, I can go find it. Can, find it. You know, the, the request was what, what was the materials we used, which yeah. is what I left with Cindy. Yeah. yeah. Which material is it? Nothing's marked on here. Like Ten different materials. 
Well, we'll have to get together. Well, I guess I have to pass it through the village. Exactly we'll let her pull it. We'll see what you requested, yeah. but that's what we were provided. And just what, so we know that we're talking about, um, the well driller told us they work with DEC, DOH, every pool, and it's dispersants. And it's not using the word fracking. It's not fracking. It's just reconditioning the wells. It's not, we're not, you know, there's a bad connotation to fracking out in western New York. We're using chemicals of hundreds well, and hundreds of. No, but it's not, we're not hydraulically fracking the well. It's, it's, they're actually just, they use, it's essentially, if you look at it, what I read there was hydrochloric acid and then some sort of biodispersant, they call it. And then, but that does not enter the drinking well, water. If you introduce that into the well, you got to purge the well afterwards. We, we actually, you, you know what? We know that. So uh, it's a good thing. Everything was done for code and approved by the farmer's office. You have to take that off site and something and purge out of the system. The foil just asked for the fracking of water wells. Let's see. Well, I had to fill out the FOIA because I came in to pick up what we discussed a week, uh, couple of weeks before, and that was about the MSD sheet. So. Well, I don't want to get, we can go to public comments in a minute, but I just wanted to see the file to see what you requested because we would certainly want to give you what you requested. It just does say, I hereby request records or portions thereof pertaining to then the applicant wrote in the fracking of the water well. So we gave, the village and the engineer gave you the products that were used in the restoration of the water wells. Um, I think um, Robert can certainly track down an MSDS sheet if that's what you want, but I don't know what that will do for you. That's the product that's there. And, uh, well, there's, um, there's like 10 different ones here. Which one is it? Uh, did you know, Robert? Can you answer well, that? Well, we use several. Uh, uh, so. I, can give, I can give you more specifics, but, or I can get it through, through the village. Well, you said the last time you get the MSD, you can give it to Sydney. No, well, I don't want to spend, we'll go to public comment on later, but we gave you what we had, so and we'll work on that later. Anyway, let's move to our uh, regular business, meaning um, the committee and department reports. Clerk Cole, could you start us with the treasurer's report, please? Uh, sure. Fund balance is general fund, $514,585.99. Water fund, $60,523.12. Trusted agency, $15,860.28. Materials management, $5,332.79. Petty cash, $25.48. Village green, $3,485.41. Hard scrapple, $11,604.17. Health insurance, $2,975.51. Capital projects, $356.67. Monthly expenses, general fund, $215,111.93. Water fund, $31,042.98. Trust and agency, $15,860.28. And materials management, $3,352.64. And... I still, I sent letters out for uncollected taxes, which is kind of a little high, in the amount of $42,416.27. And the general fund balance does not reflect uh, some money that was direct deposited into the general fund. I really just have gotten online and have been able to see, we started online banking. I can see what's been automatically deposited, which all state, no, but they don't send checks for anything anymore. Uh, an additional $10,000 for the pattern book, which was paid for in the last budget year, thanks to Brent Falter. That's a river, river valley green lake. Right. And $9,582, which is state aid, which is something we always get. And a little extra money, uh, I guess the governor uh, voted in to give all municipalities a little money from Sandy, Hurricane Sandy. We got $1,563. So it's a little over $21,000 that's uh, on top of the fund balance that I read. So we'd add 514000 plus 21000 yeah. Okay, so that's roughly 535000 nice. Mm -hmm. um, on Cindy's report, just wanted to let the board know in the monthly expenses in the general fund, this month we paid um, the first installment of the fire department 
contract. We do that in two payments now, and so we paid that. It was a pretty big chunk of money. We paid the low sap, and then we're, uh, if you all recall, we had long-standing old debt to the fire company, which we're paying off over four years. So the total of those three things is uh, 60 plus 10 plus 20, so that's $90,000. So in that 215000 because when I see a number, when that number looks a little big to me, I wonder what's in there. So um, 90000 of that is for fire protection-related contractual and LOSAP expenses. So LOSAP is paid off for the year. Um, the 10000 number is paid off. That's that installment. And then there's another payment due to the fire company later on in, the, in our fiscal year. So, so uh, that's actually good news. While we're on it, what we're looking at, we spent a lot of time and energy on the general fund budget the past few years. And one of our secrets to success has been further defining some subcategories and different things so we can monitor and measure it and manage it better. And we're going to start doing that too with um, materials management and, and water fund, meaning try to break out more specifics so uh, we can pick up trends and work with trends as we go. We'll address that more specifically in the late winter, early spring, or in budget mode, but um, we've got some ideas on some further breakdowns. So when you're looking at vouchers and things, there'll be some different code numbers added in the next few months. They're not there yet, but, uh, but it'll help. And what I do, everybody should do, is when you get the budget report, the spreadsheets from Cindy, you know, this month is month four of our fiscal year, which is 33% of the year. So not every line lends itself to this mathematical analysis, but if you go through, you can look at the revenue sides to see what's come in. And then if you look at the expense sides, technically the consistent expenses should be about 33%. You know, like I said, the fire company would not be there because they get bulk payments and one-time payments, so you, you can't look at a line like that. But, um, but if you go and look through, and, and to our credit, it looks like our budget, like what we budgeted for LOSAP came through to be the case, which was good news. Um, um, uh, we paid Panda. And, uh, it's a one-time payment, so that'll show us 100% on your uh, on your budget. So you can see that is it's, it's bigger than 33%, but it's done. It's a, it's a one-time payment. Um, and what's a good idea to look at is the bigger dollar expense lines to see how they're trending, because a couple points on a big number is more of a problem if it's, if it's out of whack. The PD is staying on task. They're one of the, the bigger lines of uh, salary and so forth, and. Um, You know, if you see anything that you have a question about, talk to the treasurer or talk to me, and you know, we could try to figure it out. And uh, lately I've been getting, we, we get an email every Sunday from controller of New York State, the Napoli. Do you guys get that? It makes for interesting reading because they audit fire companies, school districts, villages, uh, cities, towns, um, and even some other municipal type corporations. And it's kind of interesting to read what what they expect and so forth. And I think we're, every year we're working more and more to get each one of those things what they're looking for. And I think we're, I'm pretty happy with where we are right now. Um, as far as the segue in our regular business, number four there, uh, I'll just jump to that for a minute. We did file to the controller's office the AUD report. That's an outside auditor's review of the books and the figures of the village. So that got filed by a September deadline. So that's off and done. So that was good. Um, we had some meetings about that and we got all, that all done. Anyway, let's see. We'll move on to the next item. It's myself or Patrick. Do you want to talk about the police report? Do you have. Uh, for the month of September, we filed a report with the police department. Total incidents handled 216. Total UTTs, 144. Uh, it's 112 in the village, uh, three parking tickets, and 32 tickets in the town. Total arrest, 21. 15 in the village, six in the town. Thank you, Patrick. Anything else you need to want to say or anything? Uh, you good? I'll wait for that Okay. An 
case incidents handled, call the service. So if you have a call, you know, calls that were handled in the month. And it can be anything. Can be anything. I heard a question, what's considered an incident? I don't know where it came from, but we get a printout up here. Um, leaving the scene of an accident, property damage accident, it's alphabetical here. Burglary alarm, alcohol beverage violation, animal complaint, assist motorist, it goes through. Uh, this calls the service, you know. Pardon me? Yeah. yeah I mean, anything from a lockout to a serious auto accident or domestic Fire, anything. Um, lost property, property recovered. Security checks, certain people go away and this time of year they leave a form here and the police keep a little extra eye out on things. School resource officer, looks like it. Um, Are we back up there again, Ed? What's that? At the school? We're back at the school again? I thought that was a contract yeah, we were ending last year. Just put, we're good. If we could, Don, we respect you, but let's wait till public comment so we right. get moved through our business. But they go through, you know, suspicious vehicle, suspicious person, trespass. There's one here, unattended death. Um, bench warrants, welfare check. What's a welfare check? That's somebody who says my old. Basically, is um, someone, a family member lives outside of the area. Maybe they have a parent that lives here. I haven't been able to get a hold of them in a few days. Mm -hmm. That's a welfare check. They call us. We go to the residence, um, make sure they're okay, see where they are. And if they're not there, we find them. Mm -hmm. It's a welfare check. Thank you. Next, looks like we have. Sorry. One question. Okay, sorry. Did we do any foot patrols? Yes. Um, I don't put those in every single incident report. I was either doing the foot patrols, but we have a separate log upstairs where I keep um, a clipboard of uh, what businesses they go to, the dates they go to, and the times they go to them. I actually had. Um, one of the businesses uh, call last week thanking us for relieve um, things in their business in our door saying that we checked your residence at your business at this time everything was secure and we do find open doors you know so I also have um, what I started is we go into each business getting the owner's contact information so that if I do find an open door we know somebody to call rather than just locking ourselves and leaving we go back the next day to inform them. Um, we'll have a contact list of each business in the village so that if we do find open door, we can contact someone immediately. Are they doing foot patrols like during the day? Yeah, we do parking. You know, the foot patrols including the parking patrols because we get, I do get, um, we do get some complaints from business owners that uh, some of the cars will sit there for days at a time and not move. People can't come into their businesses. So we incorporate the foot patrols with the parking as well. During the day, Thank and you. at night. Thank you. Since you have the floor, Steve, why don't you go with water next? Okay, the uh, water report. Uh, total consumption mm -hmm. for the month was 7,247,000 gallons. The uh, average daily consumption was 241,000 gallons. Uh, this compared to September of 2012, where the average uh, daily was 252,000 gallons. Uh, 95 gallons, of, or yes, 95 gallons of hypochlorite was used. 32 five-gallon containers of hypochlorite was delivered. 160 gallons. Good. And the water meter bills did come out. Right. I thought I'd give an update on that. Um, we had our second quarter with the new meters, and that quarter probably had 90% of the meters changed out in that read, so we're not 100% done with a, a totally automated read, but that one is done. Um, what we did is we still convert to from gallons to um, cubic feet in this bill, but that will be changing shortly. And what we did at one of our meetings a month or two ago, we converted our cubic foot dollar rate to the same rate to be charged on a gallon cost basis. In other words, there's no rate change. And uh, we thought this read, we would probably have enough data to make another rate adjustment if we need it, or at least analyze what we're going to do. 
my feeling is that it was not quite enough meters, not 100% we're in, and it's um, it's probably not the best quarter yet. I think one more quarter would be needed to um, one more quarter would be needed to uh, really get a true calculation, a true analysis of what we're actually selling at the meter, um, and then then I think we'll know better just what what we have to do with regard to rate and folding in that water surcharge and so forth. Um, another thing on water, S S Steve wasn't aware of it, but Friday we were working on a project up on Tower Street, the 8-inch main coming off the tower itself appears to have a slow leak, and we've examined it from above, and uh, I developed a letter going out to the 15 or 20 residents up in that neighborhood. I don't know if the deck lot today, the deck lot today, the highway folks will be delivering it to the doors of folks. It's what it, Yeah. What it's about is um, we might have to turn off the tower, so we would have to pump pressure from our well field side of the system, and then the highway and contractors will open up the road and look at it. The presumption is there's a small leak on the 8-inch main, which they can patch and move onward with. But in, we might have to turn off some water in that neighborhood, and we've notified the fire department because I think there's three hydrants up in that web of, of the supply <coughs> system. So they're aware if something bad would happen, they would know how to deal with that up there. That's set to happen Wednesday, and it's really, you know, right now not looking like a major thing, but we don't know until we open it up and get a look at it. But it, that'd be the news on that. So if you live in Tower, Bird, Margaret, um, that neighborhood, you might not have water from 9 to 1, we're saying. And then when we're done, it might be a little bubbly, royally. Um, it's, it's, you don't have to boil it or anything. It's just from the work on the pipes. If they have to turn things on and off, it sometimes gets a little cloudy. But, but the directly affected folks have been notified. That's it in water. Looks like next we have Mr. Trustee Trapp. All righty. I'd like to thank the board for moving forward on the 2014 block grant. That's always a lot of fun. I mean, it's an opportunity for the, for the village to accomplish things, infrastructure, whatever, without having to uh, strap the taxpayers with the bill for it. So somebody's going to, you know, the money's out there. If we don't get it, somebody else will. So we're, we've been, as Jonah said, we've been very fortunate. Uh, in, in our attempts to uh, to get that money for the village, so I like it. <laughs> um, we'll be moving through that process. Are we going to uh, do the resolution this evening? We are, yes. Okay, but we do that when we're done with our committee reports. We'll go okay. to some regular business. Thank you. And um, while I was working on that, I, I had you know relatively limited evening time. There have been for the past couple of weeks no uh, no zoning revisions meetings, but after this gets out of the way, those things kick back up again. And uh, George, we will get back to work. And uh, let's see, just like to I think the the uh, the hugs from home box is conspicuously absent back there. So, um, Cindy, is that that it's pretty much uh, like defunct? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, unless you can find someone else to deliver, because UPS I, is not doing it anymore. I mean, it was, I, I came in while the process was already in motion. Victor Bohorian was actually, yeah, was, was doing it, and I would just meet him, and we would deliver the stuff, and we would pack it up, but it's kind of fallen by the wayside. I think without a shepherd for the project, mm -hmm. it probably has a, sort of but dwindled a little bit. Maybe, Jay, just to be clear, it's nothing to do with us. It was a linkage. UPS was delivering it overseas. And that link has broken. It's, it was a bigger project than just the village of Red Hook. There was, so was a, a monthly benefactor, and somebody would kick in a couple hundred bucks, and it would pay for a lot of the shipping. And UPS would, you know, graciously give us boxes and things for free, take them all up, and mm -hmm. it was really nice. It was a nice process while it was uh, in progress down there. But uh, it was a large program. It wasn't just regionally. It was a national. It was. It was all over. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in addition to the. Zoning Revisions Committee getting cranked back up. Um, I've been kind of tinkering around with the ESA, uh, which is the environmental site assessment that we were working on here, and that is, is pretty well 
you know, Don, you, I don't know whether you took a look at the 300 pages worth of stuff there. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's uh, will pretty much be wrapped up in the next week or two, and we'll uh, mm -hmm. see where that goes. But uh, be that as it may, we, uh, this past month we had 13 building permits issued, one certificate of occupancy issued, eight certificates of compliance issued, uh, Sam conducted three municipal searches, one stop work order, nine inspections. There was no planning board agenda and no zoning board of appeals agenda this past month. And, uh, don't get used to it, guys. It's coming. <laughs> and um, the money tendered in the past month was $5,119.50, which is... Uh, which is, uh, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. We, uh, we're moving. We're moving. 2,500 of that was water. Yeah. That, does that get pulled out of there and yeah. go into the water fund? Where the water fund, general fund, whatever it ends up being at this point down the line. What's still, it still sounds good. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can without it. What they're talking it's about there is we have, uh, for new construction, there's a water tapping fee in the village. So, um, what they're saying, the 2500 is a tapping fee that comes in through the planning department, gets logged in there accounting-wise, but then it moves to the water budget because that's where the money is spent to dig the hole and buy the pipe and make the tap and all that. So it's and the last income. thing I would like to say is that in the past, it seemed that, that some of the hard scramble days were more, uh, had more maybe commercial appeal with the bands. The average white band, Leon Russell, had a wider name recognition. But I have to say that the bands that played this time, they were for the musicians. They had some serious players this past time. I mean, serious musicians working. And if anybody saw Jim Weeder, the drummer, Rodney Holmes, uh, was, first of all, he was an absolutely monster player. Uh, if anybody, an older video, Santana video, if you happen to have seen that, the one smooth with Rob Thomas, that's Rodney Holmes playing drums on most of that album. He worked with, well, you go on his website, but some really nice guys, too. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Yep. Yeah, it was Jay Alls, well, volunteers as head of security for Hard Scrabble Day. You might have seen him with his hat on backwards and a black <laughs> shirt that said security to look tough, and uh, he keeps the band safe. And actually, Rodney Holmes was interesting story. After the act, he was hungry, and um, so we walked him over to the Red Hook Inn, not Red Hook, excuse me, uh, to the Flatiron, and he sat there and spent some of the money there. So kept it right here. Keep it local. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, anyway, thank you, Jay. That's it. All right. Let's see. Why don't we go to uh, Jen? You want to go next? Yeah, then? sure. I'll take the hard scrabble segue. And okay. Uh, that. Let me find my uh, so yeah, Hard Scrabble Day was Saturday, September 21st. The weather was awesome. Um, everyone seemed to have a good time, and the merchants actually reported good traffic. Um, so that's awesome. And I guess the Elmendorf sold more pies than they have in years past. So hooray! Um, we want to thank all the sponsors who made the day possible, uh, and the Hard Scrabble Committee who organized it all. Um, I'd also like to give a personal shout out to the Bard Center for Civic Engagement. They volunteered. Uh, trained EMTs um, for the kids Scrabble area. They had trained EMTs at the bounce house all day, uh, and it was great. And then the Bard's Bard men's rugby team came in when you guys were like <laughs> starting to deflate and uh, help strike the stage. So that was great. Um, mark your calendars. Next year's Hard Scrabble Day, Saturday, September twentieth. So you end one, and then you start up with the next one. Mm -hmm. Um, two events coming up, and the details are still being worked out, um, so please check back in before you head out trick-or-treating or whatever, because we're not quite sure what's happening. Um, Halloween, we're having a meeting tomorrow to work out the details. Um, the information in the newsletter is incorrect, that much we know. Um, Halloween celebration for the village will be Saturday, October 26th, from 11 to 1 in the morning, um, coinciding with the farmer's market. Um, we're not sure exactly what the events will be, so check back on that. Um, we do know that the village merchants will be having their own event on Halloween night itself um, with a scavenger hunt um, around the village from 6 to 8. So that's Halloween night itself. Um, Winterfest, 
again, we're doing something a little different this year, so the date and time listed on the newsletter are incorrect. We're working again with the merchants. There's a um, merchants group that has a lot of energy, and we're really psyched about it, so we want to tack on to them. Um, they're doing things Sunday, December 8th, and Sunday, December 15th from 1 to 5. Um, at the very least, we're going to have local crafters in this building. Um, it's all going to be Red Hook residents. Um, you know, the, we have a photographer, a jeweler, a um, cupcake maker. Um, so they'll all be here. We're going to have four different crafters or artists per weekend. Um, and that will coincide with whatever the vendors are doing. We believe that the winter fest that we normally have with the tree lighting and hay rides and um, characters will be that first Sunday, the December 8th, from 3 to 5. But again, we're still working on that, and hopefully next meeting I'll have the full list. And there'll be posters up, and it'll go out through KidMail and um, all sorts of social media, so events will be done there. So that's events. And then after Winterfest, we can breathe a little bit, although we're talking about doing some cabin, cabin fever. fever party sometime uh, in the dead of winter when we all can't take it anymore. All right, um, moving on to materials management. Um, in the month of September, we sold $3,080 in garbage tags. Um, September had five Mondays, so the outgoing numbers are a little bit high. We had 14.54 tons of garbage, 8.32 tons of single stream recycling, and we paid out $1,555.78. Um, we do have recycle bins free of charge for residents. Um, you just need to come to this building and pick them up, correct? Yes. They are free, and we have about two dozen here, and we have access to more. So if you're struggling with your single stream recycling, you could come in and buy your tags and grab a, a free garbage. They were donated to us by Bard College, and we have them stored out back. So uh, There's also a pledge form that goes with that, that we're, we're asking if it's possible to, to fill out. To be a lifelong garbage customer of the Village of Red Hook is the pledge. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. Give us your garbage. <laughs> that's right. And, well, give us your single stream recycling. That's really more of what right. we want. Um, anyway, uh, moving on to the library. Got their numbers this month. Uh, circulation, they shared 5,733 items in September, which is up 0.5% from last year. Uh, they hosted 52 programs attended by 679 adults, 318 teenagers, and 524 kids for a total of about 1,500 people. Uh, they hosted tours of the library for the fourth grade class from Mill Road on Friday, September 27th, and had more than 150 kids coming through the library. Uh, the Children's Learning Garden is making progress. The concrete pathway and pad for the table has been poured. The site has been leveled with new topsoil, and the mural is almost completed. Uh, Red Hook Public Library will be taking part in Bard College's 2014 Big Read. Um, there are, they are reading Housekeeping by Marilyn Robinson. Um, if you're not familiar with the Big Read, we did it a couple years ago uh, with The Great Gatsby. And the point is just for as many people in the town and village to read the same book um, and you know get involved in book groups. And I don't know exactly what they'll be doing, but Gatsby had concerts at Bard and a thing at um, Montgomery Place, and it was great. So I'm not sure what uh, housekeeping will bring. <laughs> Ideally, people cleaning your house. That would be quite awesome. Uh, they're hosting information sessions about the Affordable Care Act uh, at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, October 16th. There will be a presentation and a question and answer session by a trained navigator from a nonprofit agency. Um, we missed the first one, but there's a, another one if you would like a one-on-one -on -one session with a navigator about the uh, Affordable Care Act. That will be uh, Saturday, October 26th. That's all I got. Thank you. On it, when I we talked about the tours of the library for the fourth grade mm -hmm. classes, they also came here. So the judge and myself and Cindy, we uh, gave them a little show and tell things here in the court. The judge described court, and we described a village board meeting. They were really excited about village board meetings. I'm but, sure. Uh, <laughs> but, um, it was uh, it was a good time. They was the, the same amount of kids that came in different sections and moved through. And we gave them some treats of some sort, didn't we? So, so anyway. Let's see. Thank you, Jen. Looks like we would move on to Deputy Mayor Brent Kowalczyk. Thanks, Ed. Uh, start with the Village Green Committee monthly report. The current balances of the Village Green Committee's related budget accounts are as follows. Committee beautification is $4,000. Shade contractuals $4,280. 
and the village being committing checking account balance is three thousand four hundred eighty-five dollars and forty-one cents. Um, we're seeing an increase in this revenue because of the sale of the bench plaque program. Uh, village Green Committee meeting was held on September 17th at the Village Building, and we discussed the fall planting session, which is set for Saturday, November 2nd. A uh, luncheon that follows that serves the volunteers will be hosted this year at the Elmendorf Inn. Uh, Village Green Committee member Dave Pearson is seeking donations from local merchants to provide food and beverages for the volunteers. And we're, we've already been out looking at tree locations, uh, possible sites uh, throughout the village for new trees and talking to the uh, adjacent property owners just to notify them. Uh, hard Scrabble Day, uh, we discussed at the Village Green Committee um, different things that we were promoting and um, fun facts presentation by Dave Pearson. Uh, we also reviewed planned par uh, planting areas in, in the village parking lot. This would be on the north side and we had a, a plan that was provided by Nancy Gusky with some selections of plants and trees and different things we can do. So we're just still deciding on what to do and it'll probably be heading more towards spring I would think at this point. Um, Brenda will also seek some advice from the Cornell Cooperative Extension and Dutchess County Soil and Water Conservation District for their recommendations and advice regarding the proper soil conditions and appropriate planting material. Um, at Hard Scrabble Day, Brenda Cagle and myself operated the Village Green Information Display Table and with the fun facts um, program that we did, Dave Pearson set up a tree identification. He had five different sections of trees with leaves and nuts and berries and you had to identify those. So we gave 98 free ice cream cone awards that were provided by the steward shop um, to participants in this. And so it was well attended. Um, and on the bench plaque program, 13 of the bench dedication plaques have been installed and or ordered to date. We have 23 benches, so we have 10, 10 remaining spots. And village residents can purchase a dedication plaque that say in honor of, in memory of, or dedicated by for $125. Uh, proceeds from the sale of the plaques will be deposited <coughs> in a dedicated village green checking account and used to pay for the cost and installation of the plaques and run up village community enhancement projects. Um, people interested can contact the village clerk's office. Um, they'll contact me and we'll go ahead and, and do the arrangement and place them in the order. There's a kind of a minimum or maximum amount of characters that we're requesting, three lines, maximum three lines, no more than 21 characters per line. So that keeps it short and long names fill it up quickly. So. <laughs> the Village Highway Department, the Village Highway Department is currently conducting this lawn debris brush, brush pickup. And this will go through until we start our fall pickup, our brush and leaf pickup. So that's coming up. Shortly, then after we're done with the brush and leaves, they'll stop for the winter and we'll resume again in the spring. Um, residents are reminded to place lawn debris and brush curbside on the first and third Monday of each month. And please limit the size of the brush piles to six feet by six feet by six feet, with tree limbs and branches no lar larger than eight inches in diameter. Uh, the second phase of the firehouse lane resurfacing project was completed on October 1st. The Gorman Group performed their resurfacing procedures and cooperative intermunicipal assistance was provided by the Town of Red Hook and Town of Milan Highway Departments. These municipal highway departments provided trucks and drivers. Um, the Town of Red Hook provided four trucks and Milan provided two trucks. And just to keep the, the inconvenience of the closed road at a minimum for village residents. So that was a good intermunicipal working relationship we have with those two municipalities. Um, the total estimated project cost is $41,032 and it will be funded from the 2013-2014 New York State Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, or CHIPS, and a, a small balance will be deducted from the maintenance of the street general fund account. Uh, a new catch basin and catch, cast in place frame and grade will be installed at the West Market Street Church Street intersection in October. It's actually sitting on site right now. 
Frank Bosberg and Son Incorporated was awarded the contract to perform this service. The estimated $7,680 project cost will be deducted from the general fund maintenance of street, street maintenance budget line. And no scrap metal was served during the month of September. Total revenue generated to date for this fiscal year is $366.96. Um, since inception of the scrap metal recycling program in September of 2007, $14,506.82 has been generated. Proceeds from this program go toward purchasing tools and equipment for the Village Highway Department. And residents and businesses interested in donating scrap metal can contact Dan at the Highway Department at 758-8600 or the Village Clerk at 758-1081. And the Village Highway Department will assist property owners by picking up scrap metal from the cost. The Intermunicipal Task Force and the Red Hook Infrastructure Monthly Report actually quite a bit on the water. Um, Reddit Water Project, a meeting was held on September 11th at the Reddit Village Building to review the progress, sign and submit reimbursement requests, and review the status of phase one of the Reddit Village Well Field Improvement and Water Meter Replacement Project. Um, certificates of substantial completions um, were signed by the mayor, and this was the start of our warranties. We signed that, so that was September 11th. Uh, we reviewed the process to implement, and um, by signing the revised form E with change orders, and a summary letter to John Halgren of USDA with the proposed scope of work involving phase one contingency money, and we discussed the final payment procedures. And at some point in time, I think whenever USDA gets back online, we'll be passing a resolution to accept the project, um, lien waivers, warranties, payments, etc. Uh, the change orders involving the installation that I mentioned, uh, phase one for some of the contingency, contingency money, involves the installation of a larger pump and controls for well number three, and water quality testing of bed wells two and eight, uh, and security fencing and gates around the pump house and control room structure were also discussed. Final completion forms and resolutions for phase one prime electric contract and water re replacement contract is anticipated to be approved and completed by October 18th, pending federal government reopening. Um, a lightning strike disabled some new controls and variable frequency drives at the well field on September 12th. Repairs and equipment replacement was completed on October 2nd. The village's insurance will reimburse the cost for these repairs and additional lightning protection safeguards will be added and compensated to phase one project contingency money. Uh, the 72 hour well supply monitoring and control test, which is stopped short by the lightning strike, will resume after repairs are complete and weather permits. They have, to have three days of dry weather. So it looks like we're still wet for the next couple of days. Um, the village said the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation a listing form, a listing on the, the drinking water state revolving fund intended use plan and short-term loan considerations for Phase 2 and Phase 3 of the Red Hook Village Water Distribution System and Water Storage Improvement Project. The completed listing form was delivered to EFC on September 16th. The USDA informed the village that an updated preliminary funding estimate, or PFE, will be issued for the village water project Phase 2 once they are in receipt of various forms and there's quite a bit of forms which we'll be discussing, I think, at workshops. The $3.914 million preliminary funding estimate will initiate the process to fund the, the water project phase two with a 2.75% interest loan for a 38-year term. Phase two will include decommissioning the elevated tank, the addition of a new storage tank at the existing well field site, security fencing and gates and improvements to the mains, fire hydrants, distribution system components, and road restoration for the southwest quadrant of the village. The signed CT mail, Red Hook Village contract agreement, consultant questionnaire, and revised budget page of the 2013 Community Development Block Grant Wells 5 and 6 Rehabilitation Project was delivered to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development on September 25th. Um, this has already been talked about with, with Robert Flores. And then the $150,000 2014 Community Development Block Grant application, which is due on actually October 18th, um, 
we'll continue with the resolution after we're done here. On the task force, uh, task force met on September 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. Road specification revisions for the Red Town traditional neighborhood district and speed limit and private sign regulations were discussed. Scenic road and new start preservation zoning revisions recommended, recommended by the task force are being reviewed by the Red Oak Town Attorney and Planner. Um, shared services, the Red Oak Town Economic Development Committee, both Ed and I are the Red Oak Village our liaisons to that. We had a meeting on September 12th at the Village Building and discussed the uh, we prioritize business preferable to the residents of the town and villages and match those businesses with available commercial spaces. Uh, another meeting was held on September 26th, and our, and our guest was uh, Dutchess County Tourism Executive Director Mary Kay Verbo, and she had a lot to say about um, ways we can increase using tourism dollars to uh, bring in more tourists into this area, and a couple things that she but uh, we thought were pretty interesting. One was the, um, the lodging analysis found that the most tourist attractions are in northern Dutchess County, and most hospitality accommodations are located, located in southern Dutchess County. So to bring the buses up from southern Dutchess up to here, we're, there's certain things that we could do to accommodate those tour groups and um, working with different things. So they gave them, she gave the EDC, EDC a, a list of things to consider, and um, they were all very good. On the Community Preservation Fund and Farmland Protection Advisory Board, which I'm a member of, um, the advisory board met on September 5th at the Reddick Town Building to review the application for the partial town community pre preservation funding of the development rights associated with the close family farm <coughs> on Echo Valley Road in the town of Red Hook. Farmland protection will be provided through a five-party agreement including the USDA Farm and Ranch Land Protection Program, which will pay for 50% of the cost, Dutch's Land Conservancy, which will hold the easement, Cena Cusson, which will pay 25% of the cost, and the Red Oak Town Community Preservation Fund, which will pay 25% of the cost as well. The 103, the 103 acre parcel ranks fourth on the CPF priority list due to its importance in agriculture, protection of the town's water resources, scenic views, and historic structure. The total cost to purchase the development rights of the close family farm, including acquisition costs, um, is $671,870. The town's share is $177,435. The town board has had a public hearing for September 5th, on September 5th for October 8th. The board will accept public comments about the Kaseki Cattle Farm Incorporated, which was referred to um, in our CPF monthly report of April, and the Close Family Farm, both of them purchased of the development rights using the CPF funding. Total cost for the development right purchase for both, both farms is $1,144,340. The town share total is $304,795. Uh, since the purchase of development rights at the West Philly Quarter Farm in 2012, the CPF has generated a balance of approximately near $310. So with the purchase of the development rights of these two farms, it's pretty much going to put the CPF balance close to zero. So the, there's also properties within the village of Reddit that are eligible for CPF funding and they will accept applications. Um, this all to the town board. There were no meetings of the Red Hook Town Zoning Review Committee, which I'm a member of, and the Red Hook Library's Children's Learning Garden, as um, Jen reported on, is under construction, and um, it's looking good. The Red Hook Together, we had a meeting on September 12th, both, both Ed and I are <coughs> members and representatives of the village on that. Um, we had discussions with the library, um, the Red Hook Community's Arts, Arts Network, the Sculpture Expo 2013 Art and Architecture and History Tour, um, scheduled through October and November. I think it's happening now, on Saturdays. They meet down at the Veterans Park. And the Big Show Bill Art, which it runs from August 30th through October 6th, and the Jury Photography 2013 
show um, we discussed. Your time's up. That's <laughs> <laughs> computer. And um, Red Oak Town CAC weighed in with their with their um, grant application. They did Red Oak Chamber of Commerce. They were very involved with the Red the Volunteer Fair and what to do with Rhinebeck and the Merchants Group. Oh, what Commerce. to do with Red Oak? You misspoke. Yeah. What to do in Red Oak? Yeah. What did I say? Rhinebeck. Oh no, not right now. What to do in Red Oak? <laughs> Art College for Center, the Center for Civic Engagement, the, the big read project um, was negotiated and apparently they received an NEA grant of $14,000 for that. Um, and on a fun note, Ed Blundell and myself, um, representing the village of Red Hook, participated in the third annual volunteer fair held at Bard College Campus Center on September 30th. The village enlisted eight volunteers to assist the village green committee with tree plantings, two volunteers for government policy, water quality in general, volunteer work, and one volunteer for the planning zoning board member, and one volunteer for celebration. So we got a lot of volunteers. And not all students, there are some other people involved with that as well. So, and that's all I have. Thanks. On, on his last point, it was interesting, it was over at Bard. And um, it does tell us something Jen reported on, too. But we had a really good-looking booth. We took some uh, aerial maps of the village and did our little computer show. And what else do we have there? Some hard travel post magazines. And uh, it's essentially local folks, Bard students come around. And when Jen was talking about the Bard rugby team, it was true. First of all, Bard College and rugby in the past didn't, wouldn't seem to go together. But these, one guy showed up, and he gave me his email. And what we do for Hard Scrabble Day, it's kind of fun, like Jay alluded, it's really putting on a rock concert, so we have stage and sound equipment and different things. And we joke, we're all getting a year older each Hard Scrabble, and we need these people to move the big heavy equipment. So this one fellow from Bard at the Volunteer Fair gave me his email. So I emailed him and told him well, we need something in the morning and something in the evening. And uh, so we had the morning covered. And usually evening is like 9, 10 o'clock at night, and most of us are pretty wiped out from being up and active all day. And these five or seven guys showed up. They said, we're the Bard rugby team. And they, uh, they were smart. They knew what they were doing. And they really worked. And uh, they took a load off us. So just that one reason for being at the volunteer fair worked out for me. But they did sign up for some other things, including uh, tree planting and things. It's, and we're actually, uh, Jen mentioned a meeting tomorrow. That's not so much with Bard. That's on the local celebrations events. But um, and then we've had some more contact with Bard where they're looking for students to get some academic credit in some shape or form. So we're looking at maybe an internship with the court, something like that, where we don't pay them, but they get some actual college credits through Bard. So working on that a little bit. Let's see. Steve, I see your hand. Yeah. Hey, Brad? Yes. Yeah, a couple questions. On your community preservation fund? Yeah. Is this a forever? Yep. Who's the uh, who's the policing authority? That would be the Dutch's Land Conservancy would be the holder of the easement. All right. What happens if they violate? That would be the terms of the easement. I don't know what happens, what the penalties are on that, but and whatever the terms of the easement are, if there's a fine or a penalty. Okay. But they're monitored on an annual basis. All right. The other question was back on your uh, uh, air, your Red Hook infrastructure on the uh, the lightning strike. Yep. Um, are they has it been detailed what they're going to add to that to protect it, the ground field? Well, apparently, there's one tree back there that that consistently gets hit, so that's that's probably going to be cut. Okay. Um, they're talking about putting lightning lightning rods on each of the the pump sheds. Mm -hmm. There with an outside feed going in um, to avoid the pipes going back into the ground, so that's being discussed right now. But the biggest problem that I've heard is that one tree. Okay. And that seems that the lightning goes down there into the pipes and then back in mm -hmm. the controls. That it wiped out some of the, the new controls that we had, and those have all been replaced. So we're back up and running. And it was just unfortunate timing because we were in the last couple of hours of the 72-hour test, which monitors we, we pump six of the seven wells, and um, at the same time to see what the level of the aquifer does 
they can maintain its level, and um, we need to know we need to know that from the Board of Health needs to know that specifically. Um, so they're going to remove that tree, or do they have? I think that's that's in the works. So that's going to be part of the change order that we're doing. Okay. And that has to be approved by USDA and EFC, and we can't even get things approved by USDA right now because they're not they're furloughed. We won't go there. We won't. Thanks. You're welcome. Steve, item seven on committee. I know you're working on the time order connection. You want to talk yes, about that? I'm, I'm still working with them. I've had, um, I was uh, in email contact with them today, and uh, I'll be discussing some points tomorrow with them. Okay. All right, let's see. As far as regular business, we talked about the court grant with the judge. We talked item number two with Robert Flores. Item three there, um, the block grant 2014, we did the public hearing. We close that. We do have a resolution that the county requires that we pass. Um, what I'll do, I'll have the clerk read it. It's very short. Um, and we can have a little discussion if we need it. Ms. Cole, would you like to read that? Sure. Is everybody on copy of this? Authorizing submission of the fiscal 2014 Dutchess County Community Development Block Grant Program application. Projects, the Village of Red Hook Water and Walks Project. Whereas the Village of Red Hook is participating in Dutchess County Community Development Court Consortium for the fiscal year 2014. And whereas input from citizens and groups has been received and considered and whereas an application has been prepared which addresses our community concerns. Now therefore, be it resolved that Dutchess County Community Development Consortium Fiscal Year 2014 application for the Village of Red Hook, including the certifications, including therein, by, and hereby is approved, be it further resolved that the submission of the said application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development here be and hereby is authorized. Okay. So essentially it's a pro forma piece of paper that has to go with our application. Um, is there a second for the resolution? We can discuss it further. Second. As far as discussion, we talked about the details. Jay has the uh, poetic name there, Red Hook Village Water and Walks Project. Is, uh, our may, as well, may as well give it something. Right. It's got a little ring to it. So this is what we talked about. It's, we're going to apply for the $150,000 grant for sidewalks and uh, well two and eight um, improvements. So uh, is there any other discussion on it? I think we kind of hit it on early phase of the meeting. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of uh, passing the resolution, authorizing submission? Aye. Aye. Sign them up, it. So motion carries. Thank you. Let's see. Item five is me. I have the title of village management department meetings. There should be an S on the word meetings. What I wanted to do was as we're in October now, we're coming toward the end of a calendar year, so to speak, even though we work in a fiscal year, which is different than a calendar year. I thought each one of us should sit and talk with me and the people we are responsible for, meaning, let's say, myself and Jay, we talk with the planning and zoning folks. Um, uh, we sit with the police department management and just do sort of calendar year end, where we're at, take suggestions, give suggestions, um, look at budget, different things. Not really to set the budget yet for next year, but just to see are we hitting full stride in every area or we're not, what can we do to make it better. I, I think the public expects from us what I call effective use of the resources, meaning if we're funding something, we want to make sure the service is provided and that it's, it's provided more than adequately in, in a very highly effective fashion and efficiently. Um, so it'd be sort of give and take. I, what I envision is we would sit in the conference room with the admin staff in one day and, and then the PD another day and highway another day and then planning zoning and just work up a game plan and work with that. So what I would do is reach out to each one of you. I'll set them up and then whichever trustee has responsibility for that department, we would call them in so we work with them all. We don't need a vote or anything here. It's just more of a management situation. 
couple things I just wanted to add. When Jonah was talking, it made me think there's the Rotary dinner. I think we have a letter. Cindy, do you know that date? Do you have that? Um, I saw it in my packet. The Citizen of the Year, I found it, is um, an annual event for the Rotary. They run a big dinner at the firehouse. This one is October 22nd, 6.15 at the Red Oak Firehouse. And they name a Citizen of the Year. And this year, it looks like it's Ruth O.J. So, um, you have to make reservations if you need to, to get a question. Cindy's, are you still in the water recently? No. No? Okay. But you would know how to get them in touch with someone. Um, it, it's not free. Tickets are $40 each. It's a dinner slash roast. It tends to be family and friends. And then people from the public are more than welcome. They usually get about 100 people at these, and they're kind of fun. Panda's usually there. Another quick thing. Um, during the week, I worked with the county on a safety inspection of our operations. What is, you might remember last year, we switched to uh, workers' comp coverage to the Dutchess County Pool, mm -hmm. and they provide, like all insurance companies, a safety inspection. And I'm happy to say they, we did a great job. I mean, they look at this building from basement to top floor, highway, new garage, old garages, old uh, outbuildings at the highway, including the pump house. And, like any auditor, they find something. They wouldn't be a good auditor mm -hmm. if they didn't find something, but uh, nothing was outrageous. So we'll get a report from them. But overall, I really want to thank the highway department. It was, it was really impressive over there, both in the new garage and the way they've got the old garage functioning. The good news is, you know, we're not heating anything in the old garage and different things, but they had a nice, uh, nicely prepared and very safe looking workplace over there. So um, that, some of that goes to the police as well. Kind of with the parking the and so um, yeah about what three or four months ago the, the P, we have we call it cold storage we uh we moved a lot of the highway equipment out to the new garage and we keep certain vehicles and things in the cold storage over there but um and then one thing i put on my note we uh in the moratorium that we worked on the september 9th meeting um we've got some basic text from council for zoning and planning and then what we have to do is take that pattern book that we're going to be inserting and we have to develop a little timeline here. I've talked to some of the board members. What we have to do is get um, this moving. We gave ourselves six months, but I'd like to have it done in about three months. And it looks like we can do that. Um, so what we do is our, our workshop meeting is October 17th, I think, is the... Um, so between now and then, we'll work on some nitty-gritty items to go with the pattern book. and uh, but. We have had some submissions from the law firm helping us, so we're already underway on that. So I think that's good news for everybody. Um, let's see. We've hit the agenda, and a few things I thought of as supplementals. Any other general business from the board you want to talk about? Jaybird, anything? I'm good. Okay. Um, now, public comment. We started you out there, but why don't you say uh, question on the water bill that we just received. Uh -huh. Have you changed it over to gallons yet? No. Yeah. Okay. You see the conversion? The math didn't work on this. I just didn't yeah, know no, where it's coming from. Uh, if you look, I've seen so many computer screens. I think there's a column with gallons, and you see that 0 0.1337. Well, on the consumption at 415, but when you subtract two readings, I get 3,104. And it doesn't say anywhere about gallons, so. Yeah, no, we've. We read in gallons, and the computer converts it to cubic feet. And we get every meter installed because we've, we've had a hybrid of half cubic feet, half. Now we're like 98% gallons and 2% cubic feet. Um, so that it will convert to gallons probably next quarter. So, but the rate, what we did, George, is we the existing rate for cubic feet. We didn't change that. It's we convert the gallon size, but the dollars don't change. So, so. Yeah, I was just looking for a gallon number so I can track it. Yeah, it's if that you take point. that three thousand whatever you said there, that's cubic feet times seven point four eight is the number. But if you round to seven point five, that's your gallons. So, so you were twenty one thousand gallons. So. Yeah, then switch over to switch over to gallons in the future. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. That we we set the stage with that. We did a few a meeting or two ago. We did um. The law change where we keep the pricing, just change the unit, and then but the problem is it's the software, and we have to have all the meters ready to go, so it's coming to that point. 
me ask, we had came up before in the water about the MSD sheet. I just want to point out, the last meeting, Don asked, specifically asked him for an MSD sheet. That was the conversation. He said he would give it to him, but he dropped it off at the village. I called up, because he didn't have time to get in, and asked if the package was there or the paperwork was there. I was said, told it was. Went down to pick it up. Had to find out. Had not, now I had a file of foil. I gave. They, I picked up what they gave me. Didn't know what it was going to look like because I don't know what an MSD sheet is. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be have left been left for Don. There's a three dollars service charge, I guess, to pick it up. Handling fee on the part of the village. I don't understand that. We could explain that. There's no handling fee. It's well. There's a fee. If a copy was dropped off. This is like dropped it at my house and said I handed it to somebody else, so I get three dollars for that. And that's a handling fee. No, it's not charged. We're back. So we we're talking with the public, and Cindy was explaining the foil regulation. That it's not a handling charge; it's the copying costs is what it's. And the state law, we don't make it up here. Well, it wasn't copied. It was supposed to be. I could have gotten it and probably went to the office and got it for that matter. It's not. It wasn't a form that belonged to the village. And it turned out to be a product sheet anyway. If you went to Ford and asked for what vehicles you make, they, they don't charge you for that. It, it, there's no information pretending to the village at all in these pages. I also don't remember anybody saying uh, MSD. I MSD, remember yes. you asking what chemicals I, were I used in fracking right, right the pumps. Here. Well, what was I on the foil? Is that is that the foil? That. Uh, it, it was what was used in fracking. Pumps. Tell us, I mean, we're not trying to be obstructive. It's just my reflection is you asked what well, was I'd used. I'd like to know, you know, yeah. what, this, what the uh, material is and uh, what effect it has and everything else and what, how it's to be handled. I mean, i got to deal with these things at my, at my job. Mm -hmm. i got to have it for everything because when I go on state work, mm -hmm. the inspectors come out and they ask me for some of this stuff. They want to know what's on the vehicle and everything else. Well, what I can tell you is, I remember you asking what was used. You used the word frack the wells, and I think it's important to keep stating it's, we're not fracking. We're not using the Halliburton fracking. It's an interchangeable it's a, word. It's the same uh, thing. Yeah, I know fracking would be the one that gets the eyebrows up, yeah, but it's, it's the we, same thing as reconditioning. We're, we're not pouring. I mean, they used it themselves. Yeah. The email used it. Uh, yeah. Maybe for the record, you want to read one thing off? It's, let, let, let me just read the, the, okay. the foil here. I mean, essentially, it says, under the provisions of the New York uh, Freedom of Information Law, Article 6, Public Officers Law, I hereby request records of portions thereof pertaining to or containing the following the fracking of the water wells. Right. Okay. I, walked now, in, I was not expecting to fill out a form. I didn't, put, I didn't ask for an MSD. I forgot what it was. So, it was this paperwork that was asked for specifically as MSD. It was going to be dropped off for us. Well, I mean, what we respond to is this, and and, the, and you know, we're not trying to, to to beat you up on this one because if if we we just said George, come on on, come on and get the stuff, then the person who had to fill out the foil goes, I had to fill out a foil and I had to do this. Why did he get it for free? That's because he's on the zoning board and he gets stuff for with well, everybody. Not, everybody gets the same the process. Willing to give me something. I'll, pick them, I'll go to their house and pick it up, and we'll and, just take it out of the equation. Respond, and we responded specifically to what you requested. You, you know, if, if, if you had said the, the, request the, was, the material safety data sheets for all chemicals used in the fracking of the village wells, then that's what you would have gotten. We, you know, I think we pretty much responded. And it's not something you could go someplace else and get. Village contracts out CT mail to run our water department. It's village business. Yeah, it's so, public information. Absolutely. That's why we have this. Yeah, absolutely that's it is. That's why I have public information also. So absolutely it is. That's all we're asking. No, that's what you asked for. No, we're no. not. It's right there. Now, I don't care what you say it was. In that. I, that's not what I asked. I didn't say I it. think we could go back on the last tape. He was. But that's not a FOIL request. No, I, he I, said he would drop the sheet off to her to give to me. But it's not that's not a FOIL what request. Said. Well, guys, I, I don't. We can split hairs over it, but you, you, you pull the fast one on me. That's all. No, we didn't pull it. three dollars, you pull the fast one. <laughs> no, we didn't, George. Don't take it personally. Trust me, we did not. I get, what I would try to. It seemed like you have an underlying question that you're trying to resolve. It would be, I, I think, if I hear Donnie, he's sort of implying that um, 
the, the wells were online, which they're not. The way this project worked, wells came offline, they were reconditioned, then they went through a process where they were flushed and they were retested with DOH you know, lab tests and everything. It wasn't like you pour something down the well and push it out through the web. You know, it was, it was a controlled, done by professionals. We paid real money and these are high grade people. We can, if you want MSDS, come up and write that there. They'll get it for you. It's, we're not, we just gave you what we were given. It was here's the products that were used. Well, you it's a, get more information anyhow. But I would say when you, if after you, when the meeting's over, just it's a blank form right there. Resign it and we'll, we'll get you that. Anything else from the public? What about the uh, the issue with the school? That's the part that I remember. Oh. About. Why are we up there? That was only supposed to be like to the end of last season. Why would we not be up there, dying? Why, why would we not be in the school providing safety for our I think, students? I think, I think the safety should be provided by the school. I think they should have qualified people. They should have they do. people we, with... We're they, in there. They do have qualified people, police department. Who really? do you think does SROs? So do you, what about the security on the doors, cameras, and everything else? Hey, I'm involved in hey, every Pat. single meeting that goes on the school. Hey, Pat, why don't well, you come up here and talk, sure. talk from them? I would love to. I'm actually glad you brought that up. Just for a record, Donnie, could you state your name and yeah. Don, could you say who you are? Yeah, Don Finn. Right up village, right? And yeah, Patrick, everybody knows yeah. him. So. Yeah, I'm Sergeant of the Rice Police Department. So, your question was is why isn't the school responsible for having qualified people there? For themselves. No, no. Why aren't they responsible for themselves? Why do, why are they bring in an outside agency? So, who would you like them to hire? Their own teachers? Well, where, I'll explain how it works. The walls hire security agencies. That's completely different. I'll explain how it works. School districts across this county, their school resource officers are police officers. Their police officers first train to a police academy and their cops that are on the road. They go through a special training for just to be school resource officers. The things we provide in the school aren't just checking doors, you know, being in a meeting for security cameras. Is creating a uh, relationship with the students. It's training the teachers, training the students, um, doing things outside of training with the younger with the younger students in the school, the elementary schools. You know, we do a lot of training with uh, um, all three schools. You know, so when our job there is to provide safety for the teachers, um, the children in that school that all live in this community, and. Um, the best fit people to do it are cops because we train that way. We train active shooter training on top of the regular police training. We know the ins and outs. We constantly train for those situations. And I can speak for all the cops across the county is that we all choose to take that position to put ourselves in harm's way for everybody's family members. We choose to do that. So if you, if you compare it to in the mall security, and somebody comes into a school, God forbid, to, to, to do harm. And nothing against them because those guys have a job to do there. But what are they going to do? I mean, so I understand your question because just from not being in that position, you probably don't, you don't get why we're there. Um, but that is, you know, that's across this county. It's across other counties. Police officers are school resource officers and trained just for that specific reason. You know? And, you know, hitting on that, Donnie, also is, I say we do a lot of things with the schools. You know, I recently got this in the, you know, I don't come down to every meeting and tell you every month of every little thing we do in the schools, in the community. I'm not, I'm not here to pat myself on the back. You know, I'm here to do a job and provide a service and the best I can do. Um, you know, the first grade class, you know, we create relationships with the uh, with younger students. You know, I received this the other day um, from the school from one of our officers. He's dear officer Schaller, thank you for reading to our class. We love when you come and visit us. Uh, we think you're a cool. And the whole first grade class signed it. On top of that, it goes out to the students and to the parents is a flyer of what all the uh, first grade students are doing, um, what they're doing in their classrooms, what the projects are doing throughout the year. Officer Schaller's in here obviously reading the books to the students. You know, when we walk into school, it's not unusual. They're happy to see us. We go to their lunch classes, we're in their gym classes, we stop in. 
But while doing that and creating a great environment with the kids, we provide safety for them. And they feel very comfortable with us there. Um, I can tell you one thing right now is I'm in a lot of school safety meetings. I go to every, uh, every school safety meeting. Three, each building has its own safety committee. I'm at every single meeting. We're going over safety checks, what we can do to improve the safety of the school. Right now, our buildings during the day are very secure. We're constantly checking doors. There's, there's not a single door that you're going to find open that someone can get in without going through that main office. It doesn't happen. We've changed all that, and that's come with a lot of work and a lot of time, a lot of people putting their time in. Um, weekdays, weekends, put a lot of time into training and making sure that our schools are safe, and that's why we're there. You know, and, that, and the school funds that. What has the school done for main security? Cameras or anything else? You know, those yeah. are all, again, those are all money things that come into budgets, you know. Well, I know a lot of school, a lot of school, they change. Budget. I can tell you right now, a lot of schools have changed their locks. You know, when you change one lock in the school, it's not changed, but changing locks in this building. You know, it's big money. And um, I can tell you right now, the safety committees in that school, we have a great relationship, and they work really, really hard on improving it with the money that's budgeted, you know. Um, I can't speak for the school, I can't speak for their budget. I can only speak for being involved in it, and they work hard at it. And I can assure you that we're only going forward, not backwards. You know, it can't happen like that overnight, unless someone writes a really big check to get it done. Um, but, um, you know, they do a good job, and we work well together, you know, and that's why we're over there. And Don, two things, uh, two, two levels. I don't know if this is behind some of your question, but I remember when Jim was talking celebrations, it was last Winterfest, when the Sandy Hook Newtown thing happened, and I remember, if there's one reason people move to Red Hook, it's for the Red Hook schools. It's, it's one of the biggest draws. Don't hit your head. It's, it's, the biggest, it's the biggest draw for Red Hook. And that day, we were torn. We were doing the celebrations geared to kids, and that thing had just gone down. And um, the school knows that we have a talent, talented PD. And if it's anything to help to protect the kids, we will do it. And we're not, it's not at a cost to the village. They give us a budget line. Remember earlier in the meeting we were talking budget, we're 33% of budget year, and they're right on line with what the school's paying us for what we budgeted. They don't go and volunteer, but they get paid for what they do over there. But it's not like it's costing us out of the village taxpayer pocket. It's the school budget is their attempt, their designation is to protect themselves best, and this is the tool they've used. So uh, and it's, it, we can't go into every hour of the day and different things. It's, it's not a major component, but it's not, we're not losing money on the deal. You know, there's a lot of meetings that I do go on my own. You know, I don't, I go there because it's not budgeted in the SRO budget. It's not going to, those taxpayers should pay me to go there. So a lot of meetings I do go on my own because it's, you know, it, until we're at the position where we can pay for every single hour or where the school can, then, you know, these things have to be done. They're, and they're important to me. You know, I know they're important to my guys here. That's why they work, you know, they work really hard over there. And our steps recently have been moving toward community policing and two of the school buildings are right there with I don't know how many kids, if there are a thousand people in that, two what buildings. What kind of a plan is the school implementing? I mean, they should have some kind of a book that they're we're going to do this, this, and this. They, 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 they come in in May, gave us a big spiel about their budget and everything else, and they said, oh, yeah, we're looking into it. And this and that. You know, they, um, we got, I, guess, I can't speak for them. You know, I'm at the school, I'm at some of the school board meetings. Um, you know, you're welcome to go ask those questions, you know, because someone will have an answer for you. I can tell you that they are constantly working on improving the safety of the schools. You know, I know the schools just uh, got uh, portable radios for all the administrators, um, and our our portable radios will be on the, on that emergency channel. You know, one of the biggest issues we've had is that there's an emergency in one of the schools. I'm going to call five other people on their cell phone. Have the time, you know, they don't have it on. It might not be on. So there is a lot. There is a lot of safety things that the school is doing. You know, they're dancing on it. Like, again, you have to ask them specifics. Um, but I don't go into the meetings. They're only moving forward as fast as they obviously can with what they, you know with what's budgeted. I, I I would imagine, as when Jonah was up here and he talked about security in the courts. He said, if you want to speak to me, then we'll speak. You know, in private to let you know what's going on. I you know. I don't think it would be prudent of the school to say, well, we're going to have a guy over here at 9 o'clock at this door, and then at 10.15 we're going to bring him over here and, and I would announce that. everything that they have as far as security. But don't, 
I mean, don't delude yourself. They do have a plan. Just because you don't know it or we don't know it doesn't mean that it's not there. So, and it's very structured and it's very organized. And you know, we, uh, like I said, you know, we were very hard when uh, I know in the past when I had school resource officers, there was an office for it. I took it away. No need for an office. We are constantly moving, constantly on foot, constantly checking, constantly socializing with the people in the school. So when we walk in, it's not unusual to see us. You know, and again, there's a lot of safety things that I've done with the school that you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and air out. But they're, 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 in there, they're there for a reason because a lot of us do have children in the school and I can assure you if something goes wrong, they want somebody there that they know is going to be able to protect them. And, and that they know, somebody. that they know specifically. And I think that's an important thing as opposed to having, as you termed it, a third party organization which is essentially a mall cop, a rent a cop. These guys are part of the community here. I mean, it's a, it's a big difference. It's like we say, we want people, we, we want foot patrols. Why? Because it's all part of the community. It brings everything a little more closely together. All right. I, I think the problem, last year when they implemented it, it was a closed door meeting. It was voted against, basically the audience that was here was opposed to it. You blew it through, and it was going to be a one-year contract. I didn't see another vote to renew a contract. Was that done close, behind closed doors again? No. There has to be a contract with the school. We only get one year. But last was a one-year contract. I don't understand what what is so negative about having school resource officers. I don't understand. I mean, everything you don't say anything positive. Everything's always negative. So explain to me about keeping the community kids safe. You ask any parent's community about keeping them safe. What's you, negative? You can about? have the kids sitting here with bulletproof vests on. It's not going to make them safe. Okay. It's a delusion on somebody's part. You can take safety measures because school can do. Yeah. We expect them to do it. Yeah. They're getting millions of dollars. Okay. Right? But the thing is, I'm, we're con I'm concerned about the village liability. Those are village guns in the school, village bullets. Last time I brought it up, they laughed. I'm not laughing at it. Well, and the gun went off down in Hyde Park. It's different. The police officers don't. You know, circumstances. Well, let's, let's just be clear. I'm just bringing up the yeah. liability. Yeah. If you have to fire down there and hit somebody, even though the school has insurance, it's going to go everywhere. They're going to want a new school, like they did in, down in Connecticut. I mean, things you're, happen. You're comparing it to things that, you're talking about things that, I, that are mind-boggling to me. When I'd like to see the school things. hire their own staff to be secure. They do. Whether it be state troopers, or, or, or sheriffs, or a few people on oh. the side, rather than tied into the village, or town. Well, George, I think, let's, let's draw to a close. We heard your opinion. Um, we appreciate your opinion, but I think two things you need to be clear about. By inference, you're somehow saying that something that happened in Hyde Park, I think the public has to be clear. That had nothing to do with our police department. That's, it's, it's not our, it's not Red Hook working in Hyde Park, or what do you say, uh, Ulster Park, where it's close Highland. to Highland. Highland. Um, that's nothing to do with Red Hook. And uh, I think the second thing, um, the school, we know there's a liability with everything. The village buys insurance. We have professional managed staff. Everything we do is a risk. We uh, plow a road, we build a road, we dig a hole in the ground at the main, you know, we work with risk. We try to minimize the risk, but to live, you take risk. And we're, on one level, we're proud of certain risks that we take. And in this case, it's, um, you know, like Jay said, it's a community police force. The kids get to know them. You know, it's, they're, they're here every day. And I think it's a win-win for the village because they get to see them in their other life, outside of school and things. So it's a, it's a comfort level. but. Yeah, you know, it's we do get paid for it. We're not volunteering it. They're not overextending, and uh, they're all trained police officers. And I think the kids are safer with what we're offering, and that's the biggest thing. So, anything else from, from folks? I have one question. I want to make a statement. You want to go out there and ask? Or what? No, <laughs> I just want to explain to George and Don. Next time this happens, if you got some information that's not exactly what you want, you don't have to wait to bring it up at a board meeting and make it sound like we're trying to pull something over on you because trust me, we're not. Call well, me. I'm here every day, day, all day long. In five minutes, you could have called me when you realized you had the wrong. I would have just made a phone call, got you the right paper, and given it to you. Well, I wouldn't have charged you again. Wanted. That's why I wanted to know whether he dropped something else off. Call me. You know I'm here every day, okay. all day long. I'd be more than happy. Probably within 24 hours, you would have had the paper you wanted. And this was still that two weeks ago. 
Okay. Let's see. Did we vote on everything we needed to? We did the CDBG. Um, I don't know of anything else we need to vote on. We have um, a need for a motion to pay bills after audit. So um, All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then. Um, Go ahead. And then it looks like 9.08 p.m. I can make a motion that we adjourn this evening's meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody.